How's it going guys, welcome back to our first episode on how to do basic HTML and CSS. Now in this series we're going to be talking about how to build a complete website, or at least learn the tools to build a complete website, only using HTML and CSS. Now I should probably mention that we're using the latest version which is HTML5 and CSS3. And the reason we're doing that is because it's been out for quite a while now so I don't see any reason not to use the latest version, which is of course the one everyone is using at the moment. So. What we're going to do in this episode is, first of all, I want to mention that once we get started on actually coding stuff, I'm going to be explaining stuff very thoroughly. I'm going to explain you guys to you guys why we're doing different things we're doing and what they do. Because it's very important that you guys don't just learn or like memorize the code. You do actually need to understand what it is we're coding. It's kind of like learning a new language. You know, you do actually need to understand what you're saying and not just learn phrases so you can go to other countries. So you want to be able to do this fluently and actually understand what we're doing when we code websites. Because coding is kind of like learning a new language. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to talk about what kind of software you need. We're going to talk about how much it costs to build a website. And the first thing I can mention is that it does not cost anything to build a website. Of course, you need a computer, which you need to pay for. But once you have the computer, you don't need to pay anything. On your computer, you will actually have a program called Notepad or something similar on Mac, which you can actually use in order to make a website because this is a basic text editor. And of course, Notepad is not going to be the one we're going to be using. But just to give you guys an example, you can actually just get started straight away without needing a text editor, or, you know, without the need to download anything. But of course, like I said, we're not going to be using this one. Now, I do actually want to give you guys a couple of examples of different software that we can use in order to get started. And it doesn't really matter which one you decide to use because we just need a text editor. And the only differences between the different softwares is, you know, how much they have inside of them. You know, syntax checking and colors and, you know, layouts and that kind of thing. Th that's the only differences. They all do the same when you type the same code in them. So. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at a couple of different softwares and I do actually have four different links open. And the first one we're going to look at is one called NetBeans. Now NetBeans is a text editor for, I, would, I wouldn't say nerds, but for people who are very much into learning a more complicated or like a more in-depth uh, program or like software for coding. This one has a lot of functionalities. And if you just start out coding, I would not recommend you guys using this one. Because it will take you a day to get to know NetBeans and a lot of tutorials online on, on how to get started on it. So I do recommend not using this one if you're you know fairly new at coding. Um, but they do actually have different versions. They have different versions depending on what kind of coding you want to do. And if you want the complete package with all the codes, you can get that one too. But if you do want to use NetBeans and you're watching this tutorial, you should probably be getting the one called HTML5 and PHP. Okay? Now... Another text that we're going to look at is one called Notepad++. And yes, you heard right. It is Notepad++, meaning that it's a more advanced version of the regular Notepad we just looked at to begin with. Um, but it does ha have some different syntax. You know, it shows different errors and it has different colors in it. And it is meant for coding, I guess. Uh, but it is, it is a free to download, the same as NetBeans. It's also free. So you can just go in and download one of these two if you want to use one that's free. The last one we're going to look at, which is also free, and I need to admit I have never used Notepad++ before, but the one I am using is the one called Sublime Text. Sublime Text is also a free to download version, um, but you, you can pay for it if you want the you know the uh, another version, which is uh, I do not remember what they call it, but it is one where you can actually earn money on it if you, if you could call it that. So if you want to pay for it, you can actually earn money on it. I have no idea how to check that kind of stuff. I do have the paid version, but if I were to just get the free version and sell a website, I don't know how they would check this kind of thing. So just mentioning mentioning it for you guys. Um, but you can actually get this one. Now, the last one we're going to look at is the one called Dreamweaver. And this one is a fairly expensive one. You do need to pay for this one. And this one is a very nice text editor. It's very good for getting started on coding and it does provide a lot of functions that the other two that were free, which is not NetBeans, uh, doesn't provide. So this one is actually one you need to pay a membership for and, and depending on what kind of person you are, if you're a student or if you 
uh, if it's a company account or depending on what you want to, you know, what kind of person you are, you can get different offers, like different money you need to pay every month. Um, I do have the, the complete version down here. As you guys can see, I do actually have most of the programs down here. Um, but we're not going to be using Dreamweaver because of one simple fact, which is I cannot zoom in on the text for you guys. So we will, in fact, be using Sublime Text. And I did actually write some stuff in here just to kind of show you that there is stuff to write in here. Now, Sublime Text, you might be asking, why does it have a dark background? And that is for a simple reason, which is it does not hurt your eyes if you sit in code for a long time. A lot of people say they have a little bit of trouble seeing on my videos when I do tutorials what I'm writing because of the dark background. But I need to mention to you guys, it is better to have a dark background than a white background because it will not hurt your eyes or give you a headache. So this is actually essentially what you need to get started. Um, I did mention that it does not cost anything to start coding. And I do mean that you don't need internet. You don't need a server. You don't need anything other than a computer. You can actually view your website in your browser without internet. So you don't need to worry about that kind of thing. The only time you need to pay stuff is when you do want your complete website to go online because then you do actually need to have internet and you need to pay for a server. So at the very end of these tutorial series, I will actually talk to you guys about picking a server and how to get started and uploading everything. But for now, this is the introduction. And in the next couple of episodes, we'll actually talk about how to actually get started coding. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys later.